Okay, so we're gonna pull out my old, uh, my old friend, the uh, Carbon Arc Torch. Um, and I should explain what a Carbon Arc Torch is. Um, basically, it's it's very old technology. Barely, it doesn't get used anymore. Uh, there's very few people who still use it, but. Basically, you take a carbon rod, which I just took out of this carbon zinc battery, uh, and you run it with your welder, AC or DC, doesn't matter, and it's kind of like a oxyacetylene or whatever type of torch you're using, you want to use. Um, so this... Uh, and it can produce a flame of up to 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the trick is, as opposed to an a, a, a oxyacetylene torch, uh, you actually have to light an arc and keep it lit, which can be difficult. Um, it's kind of like stick welding. But uh, let's give it a shot, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, the first thing that's going to happen with this so, so I'm going to try to cut this piece of metal right here off. Uh, I think I can. Um, anyway, the first thing that's going to happen is the whole rod is going to catch on fire because we're burning off the flux that is on the rod. So as soon as it gets super hot like this, the resistance increases and it no longer wants to create an arc. So to let it cool down a little bit, it also gets more brittle as it gets hotter. Carbon is already very brittle, but as soon as you keep cycling that, that heat, um, where it cools down and it heats up, uh, it gets, it gets, um, hot pretty, it starts to get really hot. Um, uh, it starts to get even more brittle. Um, now, the other thing is, is now, now that I've left that cool, um, I've had experiences with this type of torch before where um, that metal is going to be hardened. So uh, good luck trying to hit it with anything else but a grinder because it's not going to happen. So let's keep going here. <laughs> cool down a little bit um no i mean you could try to do something similar like with tungsten like tig welding but the thing is is that with tungsten you're going to get a um tungsten has a lower melting temperature than carbon carbon has the highest melting temperature of all elements um that are conductive i would say uh there are other elements that have a higher melting temperature but of all conductive elements carbon has the highest melting temperature so um tungsten would melt in this case actually because tungsten does have the highest melting temperature of all e metals but it isn't the highest melting temperature of all conductive elements so um yeah all right let's keep going <laughs> Let's try something thinner. Might be able to actually cut something thinner. All right, I know that I'm probably going to be able to cut this, so I'll cut this off.
Okay, I just cut that off with the tip, with the heat of the carbon rod. Um, there is another way to operate the torch, so I'll go get another carbon zinc battery. Uh, this way you, tends to yield more heat. So you're gonna shut the machine off and let it cool down a little bit, because this, this makes the machine a lot, uh, it uses a lot more power than welding when you do this. Let's do some cutting. So as I said, this is going to be the other way to operate the torch. So in this way, what we do is we take our piece of metal that we're trying to cut. By the way, shields down. So we created an arc with these two pieces of carbon instead. And that's going to give us a ton of heat. hard to keep these together. They have, in original carbon arc torches, they have a way to, it holds two rods, but I don't have one of those. And they're extremely hard to find. You all notice that my carbon rod is now shortened. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what happens to it. I think it may melt and it just kind of vaporizes. Um, yeah. All right, let me get a fresh carbon rod and we will try this method again. I might also try building um, something. Now that I have a different welder, I might try building something that'll allow me to do um, carbon, uh, carbon arc torch or better. So you do want to keep yourself covered up pretty good here too, because uh, in uh, Welding, you get a lot of UV, but this gives you even more UV, so you're gonna get a really bad sunburn if you're not careful. Long sleeves, everything you can do to protect yourself. So I have a puddle of molten steel right now. And done. All right, well, there's the general idea of how the carbon arc torch works. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna see if I can make something to make a carbon arc torch that's actually like a real carbon arc torch when they, back when they were making them and uh, see what I can do with that. I will come back when I've got that done. Okay, so this is what I came up with for my uh, carbon arc torch. Um, it's about as close as they, uh, uh, it's pretty close to what they originally looked like where you have these two rods that will move in except you have much bigger graphite rods. Um, I drilled holes in these and added these little uh, screws to retain the rods and then uh, six gauge wire on the back connected to the stinger on the ground clamp. Um, let's give it a shot, see how it goes. I got a little handle here, and then I did make this part out of metal, and then I realized that it was shorted out. So uh, that was pointless. Um, let's give it a shot. My biggest concern is that the wood is gonna start to, um, yeah, my biggest concern is that that 
wood is gonna get uh, just burned. But we'll see how this goes. Shields down. Uh, it could be better. I, I'll probably try to redesign this, but this is working much better than trying to hold the stinger and the ground clamp to do this. Shields down definitely, just in case we accidentally ignite the arc. Um, this is going to be extremely bright for your eyes if you accidentally touch it. Let me get some uh, cutting, get a filter on the camera so you can see what I'm trying to see. 